I'm Dr. Matthew Wilson. Um, I'm postdoc researcher with the centre. I work uh, close with Roger Stanley, it's particularly on this packaging project. And the other right name up there is Ki Nya Huin. Uh, she is our centre's newest student. Um, we're very hopeful that she'll be arriving uh, in Launceston in the next couple of weeks. Um, she has a Bachelor of Engineering in Food Technology from the International University of VNU in Ho Chi Minh City, the, the leading university in Vietnam. Um, she's worked extensively on um, shelf life trials, century trials, particularly of tropical fruits like uh, mango, star fruit. She's also worked on fermentation processes, some really interesting stuff in honey, in whole grains, chocolates, uh, all, all sorts of fun and interesting things. So I'm um, really looking forward to having her on board, particularly me, because then she can start giving these presentations instead. <laughs> So what will this packaging project look like? Um, basically, uh, our, our aims with, with packaging are to extend the shelf life and to improve the retention of key quality attributes within uh, fresh fruit and veggies. Um, and ultimately that will Im improve customer experience. I've got a couple of photos here of one of the latest trends in, in food packaging, which is these resealable packs that are coming out of Europe, which are a great way of sort of maintaining that sort of ideal gas environment within, within the the fruit or veggie packaging. Um, they, they won the, the best packaging award from a, um, a big um, venue in, in Europe a couple of years ago. They've, they've come out of Italy. I think they're really exciting stuff. Um, and obviously we've just had two fantastic presentations about fresh cut fruit. We all understand that the um, lots of value, um, particularly going forward um, in that sector of the market. Um, our approach, well, uh, currently we're um, underway with a report on the, the current um, innovations in packaging. We've identified a lot of the the most exciting and innovative products out there. Um, they're from all around the world. Um, different parts of the world have different fruits and veggies they're trying to reserve and they have different strategies of doing it and we're keen to look at the different methods that they've got to do those sorts of things. Um, and when Nya comes on board, um, she'll certainly help out with that. Then we're very keen to talk with, with different industries here in Australia um, about what their packaging needs are, where, where they see um, future benefits that they might need for, for their products. And then we will hope to collaborate with those industries on research trials, both for existing packaging, of new packaging that we've identified, and, and different ways of optimising those packages right throughout the supply chain. Because we want you know fresh fruit and veggies to look as, as good as possible, both by the time they get to the retail point of view, and then when they get home with the consumers. So um, one of the exciting things that's come out of this, um, Tom briefly mentioned that before, is our work in collaboration with Professor Ron Wills from University of Newcastle. He is the the world leader in uh, low ethylene research, uh, looking at the impacts of, of or effects of eth uh, very low levels of ethylene on fruits and veggies, including fruits like watermelon that we didn't previously understand had such sensitivity to very low levels of watermelon. Um, Yam was being a bit modest before, he didn't mention that he and Professor Noel Davis across the road have, have developed ethylene measurement techniques right down to, you know, the, a few parts per billion, three or four parts per billion that they can detect very low levels of ethylene, that, that'll be fantastic for our projects going forward, uh, looking at, at different things like sachets, like filters, like screens to block out things like air conditioning units, that sort of thing. Uh, ethylene, for example, um, can come out of uh, diesel exhaust, it can come out of, of air conditioning units. There, there are non-fruit or, or um, plant matter sources of ethylene and it's important to control them too, specifically for, for products like, um, say, kiwi fruit, which are extremely sensitive to, to ethylene. So uh, along those lines, we're hoping to start very soon a collaboration with Bioconservation, a uh, ethylene scavenging company, or oh, producing company out of um, Barcelona in, in Spain, and DuPont from Luxembourg, who are, are making the, the, the plastics that those sachets come in to um, look at different ways of, of, of looking at um, ethylene control right through the supply chain. Professor Wills has done fantastic work looking at how, say, um, sachets of, of, of ethylene control can uh, extend the shelf, shelf life of strawberries in the package in a lab, but this um, research would, would ideally take that right through the supply chain, look at what's going on in the field at harvest, look at um, the, the storage um, at, at the farm site, look at transport to different distribution centres and storage at those centres, that sort of thing. Um, and we really hope to, to see some promising results out of that. Um, another in, uh, innovation that's got us really excited is this um, soaker pad replacements from um, developed by Pack Group in, in Melbourne, in, in Australia. Um, I'm sure all, well, most of you will have um, opened up a, a, a packet of mints and then put it in the pan to try and brown it off to make, you know, pasta or something. And 
that soaker pad sort of stays in the saucepan with it and it's kind of a bit disgusting seeing all that blood and everything on the soaker pad. Um, this is a, an alternative to that. Um, it's already being used in New Zealand for that very purpose, for, um, for meat. Uh, we see lots of potential um, here and around the world for um, this to replace soaker pads for things like berries that um, have, you have big problems when they, they, they bleed um, juice out of them. Um, that creates a really beneficial environment for um, annoying food micros. Um, uh, this could help prevent that. Uh, really good applications also for fresh cut fruits um, and veggies because it, I mean, there's inevitably going to be juice leakage from those sorts of products and, and this could be one innovative way of, of um, capturing that juice um, there's a fantastic photo of Jan's taken off the, the, the individual cells themselves that are um, sort of soaking up that moisture and, and keeping it away from, from the fruit and veggies. Uh, this morning, Claire, I thought, spoke quite well about Breatheway, about the, um, the possibilities for that with cherries. Uh, we also see broader possibilities for fresh cut fruits, for, for lids for fresh cut fruits, for example. Um, nothing's ever going to replace a, a, a good cool chain um, system in terms of extending um, to, uh, shelf life, as the leader was alluding to in her questions earlier. But this is one method that, that can better cope with variations in that chain, which will inevitably occur, um, particularly you know, once it, the, the product's left, say, the supermarket environment is going on, the, on its way home. As Claire said, her dad might have a fridge in the back of his car, but most people won't. Uh, this is one sort of solution. It's, um, what's one of the brilliant things about this is it's so scalable. It's used for veggie packs like this in the U US, uh, for shredded cabbage and salad mixes. And it's being trialled right up to like industrial level um, transportation of the uh, salad veggies, say by the US Navy around the Pacific, that sort of thing. Um, a really exciting um, example of um, intelligent packaging. And onto intelligent packaging. Um, uh, I've chosen here to put up some uh, thin film uh, photographs because this is one of the, the really um, sort of standout products out there. This is from Norway. It's printed uh, electronic technology. It's very small, it doesn't sort of get in the way or look you know, out of place on the, on the, the packaging. It looks quite, quite nice and, and, um, and it really sort of fits into that sort of dynamic of the, the image of the, um, the, sh the ribbed salad um, contained there, or the strawberries for that matter. Um, in intelligent packaging is any sort of packaging that kind of communicates uh, what's going on inside the, the package to consumers. Um, an obvious example is is for example, um, you go to Woolworths and you buy you know, a bag of carrots and you can use your smartphone to zap it and it should come up and say, you know, this is from Harvest Moon or onions, they might be from Charlton Farms or something. And that's a, an easy way of interacting between the product and the consumer. Um, there are other ways to, to look at um, temperature, for example, gas environment, which can be really important for foods that can ferment, that sort of thing. Uh, we see lots of good possibilities for uh, intelligent packaging in the, the food and uh, fresh fruit and veggie space. Also active packaging. Unfortunately the photo here hasn't come up too well but that's fresh paper which is a really exciting product out of the United States um, just based on the fact that um, impregnating spices or, or um, something like fenugreek for example has natural antimicrobial properties. Um, it's it's very, obviously very safe because you know people eat it all the time and just <coughs> for example storing that in your fridge or in a, in a package might be a great way of preserving fruit for longer. Here we have root trays um, which is a much simpler way of sort of keeping the, the water from the, the fruit environment, though obviously uh, going to be less effective long term. Was it quite hard to find a photograph of an edible coating because an ideal edible coating shouldn't really be visible? Um, and this isn't a great example because it's a mandarin. You're going to peel the mandarin anyway, so you're not really going to eat the coating. But um, so just to sum up, active packaging just anything that absorbs or, or um, releases compounds into the packaging. Uh, the most common one you, you'll see is, is those oxygen um, scavengers, like you get in a, a, a thing of burritos or tacos or something. Um, just a really simple way of, of monitoring, the, uh, of affecting the environment inside of packaging and, and lots of uh, good uses for fresh fruit and veggies. So um, how are we going to do this? Uh, shelf life trials, um, Jan uh, and Michelle already mentioned different instrumental approaches that they've um, developed for um, quantitative sensory analysis. We're, we're, we may need to back that up with sensory and consumer panels, we're not sure. And um, yeah, Claire's already talked about monitoring gas count composition, so, so those sorts of things are quite familiar, but we think there's very powerful ways of, of monitoring the, um, the effectiveness of, of packaging on shelf life and on, on quality. And what will this lead to? Um, optimising packaging methods um, for extending shelf life. That's the, the key goal. 
and um, possibly even introducing new packaging types for different situations. That, that would be a great benefit to, at the end. And of course, developing packaging skills um, throughout the training centre. All of these, all, almost all of the project, uh, projects we're doing here um, and we're talking about today and tomorrow will involve packaging in, in some form, and this is a, a great way of um, combining them all together. Um, so, uh, to do that, we're going to conduct trials with our um, partners we've identified right through 2017 through to 2019 with, with NAS PhD. Um, uh, we're uh, going to uh, release some industry reports, as Tom mentioned, on different technologies that have been identified that, that we find um, interesting and exciting. And so uh, what we do need to, to, to clarify though is where to circulate those industry reports to have the widest and, and best audience, and also which state conferences or um, industry presentations might be the most useful for, for sort of getting that information out there and receiving information back so it's a, a proper conversation. So thanks very much for your time.